Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Reagan and welcome back to my channel. So the reason why I'm so excited is because I got great news today and, and I'm always excited about everything that is happening with, you know, with the channel, with the things that I'm making. But today I'm really, really excited because Magic Leap actually provided this to me for free. They, they're actually giving this to me as part of the independent creator program. So I want to announce and say that I'm actually a sponsor by Magic Leap. They're helping me to build, you know, my dream game, which is going to be an augmented reality game running in Magic Leap. And, and I'm really, really excited. So I'm also excited because I'm going to walk you through, they, through basically what they call the virtual room generator that is going to allow us to create a virtual room. And then the next thing that we're going to do with that is actually bring that into what they call the Magic Leap remote. With the Magic Leap remote, we're gonna we're gonna load that virtual room, and then with the virtual room, we're gonna be running a game that I'm building. So let's actually jump into Unity, and I'll show you how some of those features work, which are really really cool. All right, guys. So let me show you what we're gonna be doing in this session. So the first thing that I want you to do, if you ever need to create a basically a new virtual room, is you have to open up the virtual room generator. And if you didn't watch my previous video, I had a video where, which I'm gonna put in the description of this video, where I went through and created a virtual room and we imported it into Unity. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna do that one more time. The reason why I wanna do it is because the room that I have is actually not the room that I want to test, meaning that it has just too much furniture, I have too many things on the way. And right now I only need a room that is flat, basically just has a carpet and it's gonna allow me just to position things around much easy. So the cool thing with this is we can create multiple rooms and we can test in multiple different setups, which is what we wanna do for our augmented reality game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the virtual room generator, which is part of the Magic Leap SDK, the Looming SDK. So open it up and it's gonna open this beautiful splash screen and also a different setup here that it's gonna allow us to basically generate the room. So if I click on new project, I'm just gonna say, so this is gonna tell you, okay, you want a couch room, you want a dining room, or you want a random room. So if we do a random room, we can see that we'll get, you know, different different setups, which is funny because I'm creating a, I'm creating a game that creates procedural buildings, and this looks similar to that, except that it's, you know, more, on the inside that it, that it is on the outside. So let's try doing another one. And we can probably work with something like this. Well, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to, I'm going to, this uses similar commands that I, I have experience with, such as Maya or Unity. So if I select uh, an area or a game object, which I call in Unity, you can press the F key. You can also use your mouse, Your if you have a touchpad, you can, basically with your two fingers, drag in and then drag out. And that's gonna zoom in and zoom out. I can also basically just by hitting the option key and I'm on a Mac and basically dragging, I can basically pan around the, the area, which is really, really cool. So I haven't really deleted furniture. So let's see how this goes. I am not an expert by any means. So if I go here and select that, and we can probably just hit delete. Maybe that doesn't work. And I don't think that works. Okay. So it looks like you have to use the function key if you're on a Mac. And I believe it's probably the same in, in Windows. If not, you're you know you're more than welcome to look at the documentation. And I'm gonna delete the couch, I'm gonna delete basically everything around. I'm just gonna leave the carpet and so that we have an area where we're gonna be putting the buildings that I'm gonna be that I'm gonna be creating, I I'm okay. Let's actually delete this one as well. I'm gonna delete the lamp. I'm gonna delete that one. Whatever that thing is, we're gonna delete. And I really don't need the couches. Let's leave the room, you know, empty so that we have a lot of space to. I don't know if I can do multiple selection. Looks like. Let's see, let me try. No, that doesn't work. Or. I do shift okay so you can do shift select to select multiple things that's cool and then we'll just do you know function delete that should delete it and I think I'm okay with leaving that lamp so then let's see so if I go around this is cool we still have a couch there I think ah, let's delete it we don't need the couch let's delete that guy too 
And let me see if I go inside and then I rotate around. I think I'm okay with leaving that bookcase there. Okay, so I'm happy with what we have here. And of course you have other things in here that you can say if you wanna, you know, you wanna change the, the room configuration, which I haven't used. So this is actually pretty cool. So I can say, oh, I guess if you wanna, if you wanna generate a new room, this will be the presets that you can you can set. You can set, you know, a preset for the floor length, the floor width, the wall height, maximum number of walls, and so on. And also for the furniture, you can do, you know, if you want to include a carpet, if you want, you know, how many shelves you want, how many sofas, chairs, and so on. Also a random cluster and wall decorations. This is pretty, pretty cool. It's funny, like I said, because the the stuff that i'm building for the new game is similar to this except it's like i said it's on the you know it's on the outside so so this is cool it's, it's very similar to what we're you know we're building so so once you have that the next thing that you have to do is just you know once you're happy with the results just click on save room and then save as and basically want to save these in you know in an area where we want to store it i believe the other one so i'm gonna put it let's see we're gonna do documents, magic leap, virtual room generator, and then project. That's fine. We can put it in there. And, and this one is just gonna say empty, empty room. And that's fine. And then we can just hit save. And I'm gonna close out of this. We don't need that anymore. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I have Unity running on the right side. And like I said again, I'm assuming that you, you already installed the Lumin SDK and you also had Unity set up. Again, I'm gonna put that in the description of this video so that you have, you know, a reference if you want to. I recommend that you start with those before you watch this video. And then once you watch these, you know, that those videos, then feel free to look at this one because it's gonna to start to make more sense. And also you're gonna have all the tools that you need to do what I'm doing. So I'm gonna have that on the right side. And if you look at my setup right now, I have, you know, what I call a procedural structure. And like I was saying, this is very similar to, to what Magic Leap, Magic Leap did, except it's from the outside. I can, you know, I can go ahead and resize the structure. Let me hit F so I can focus on that. And I can show you what the game is gonna the game is gonna look like. So yeah, I can I can resize, I can change the width of you know of some on some on, on how many levels I have between you know on the horizontal length and then i can also do you know if i want to do the depth i can do that so there we go so that's the, the maximum width the maximum depth minimum width minimum depth and then i can also determine you know how many floors i want also the floor fall off so we have a lot of different settings in here and i'll be showing you more about these as we as we build the game for now i just know that this is a procedural building and let me let me make it a little smaller so that I can focus on there we go so we have more real estate and, and the other thing that I have in here is basically the UI which right now is just basically static it's just sitting in there it doesn't follow the camera or you know looks at the camera we have to find the UI which is basically know how it's gonna look like because you don't want users to be you know looking for a UI when when they need to you know either look at stats or or do some kind of action and I also have a red box which came from you know the hello the hello cube tutorial that I follow from the magic leap website so that's basically what's gonna be I'm, I'm gonna be rotating the camera looking at different things and I'm gonna run in unity I'm gonna be basically generating new structures and so the cool thing about this is I don't need to run this on the device even though I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing that but before you do that, it'll, it's cool that you can be testing that within Unity. You don't have to leave it and put it on the device until you're, you know, to a level where you are ready to test it on the device. So let me show you how we can test it in what I call the, well, what actually Magic Leap calls the, the remote. So it's actually called Magic Leap Remote. And if you open that up, it's gonna allow us to to start the simulation. So we're not gonna start this on the device, or so we're gonna start this on the simulator. So if you want to start on the device, then you know you have to you have to press that option. the The other thing that you'll watch from the previous video is that you have to make sure that you select this option. So you're gonna you're gonna go to Magic Leap, 
and it enables zero interaction. And you have to do that if you want to run in the simulator. It also says here to zero interact on the simulator, click on start simulator, to zero interact on the device, connect the ML1 and then click on start device. So I'm just gonna do that, enable zero interaction, which I did. And once you've done that, unit is gonna close and it'll reopen with that mode on it. Another way to check that, that that work, is it says, it will say OpenGL 4.1 Lomino S on the right top side of the toolbar. And when you're ready, then we can just click on Start Simulator. And it's gonna open this really cool interface, which is gonna allow us to select the room that we just created. So right now it's just empty and you can, you know, you can go in and in here I can rotate, but you can't really see anything because we haven't really added a room. This is just an empty area. So to add a room, which is what's confusing when I was starting out because I'm like, okay, how do I create a room? I, it wasn't really intuitive. So that's why where I show you the virtual room generator. So you do that first. Once you have that room created, then you open the Magic Lib Remote and you click on this plus symbol. And every single one of these things have a tooltip. So if you don't know what they do, just hover over them. And this one says low virtual room. So that's what we're gonna do. And right now I have a hello cube room, which I put in a different location. So I'm just gonna go into Magic Lib. And I'm actually gonna go into where I save it, which is documents and Magic Lib, virtual room generator, and then projects. And there is there is on room. So it looks like I didn't save it with the right format. So. Let's leave this open and open it again. Open the virtual room generator. And we're gonna load that project. I think I saved the project, but I didn't save the actual room. So here's our project. Now to save a room, we're gonna go into save as. And looks like this is only saving the project. So let's see, oh, export. There we go. So I guess you can, you can have a project, which is cool. And you can also have a room, so Let's see, so this has a project. Okay, so projects will go under projects, exported room go go under exported room. Like I say, I'm not an expert in this, I'm just walking you through what I've been learning. So if you have any other questions and you have better ways, always you know be able to, be sure to let me know through the comments. I'm, I'm always happy to learn. So once you're ready, just, just hit save and it's gonna save the room. So the export is completed, we can close out of this. And now I can go into that other folder, which is the exporter room and double click on my room. And there we go, we have a cool room. So if you notice, I, I went in and, and basically up, updated the, the location of the camera. So if you want to reset the camera position, you can, you can click here where it says reset head pose. And it's gonna put uh, basically the head pose in the default location. So sometimes when I get lost and I'm like, you know, dragging and rotating around, I just click on that and that's gonna set it back to, you know, the original position. position. So so this is cool because this is basically simulating the room that we just created. And yeah, we created our first room, which is actually pretty cool. And we can, like I said, we can drag on our mouse to rotate around and to zoom out and zoom in. So we can do basically what we did on the, on the virtual room generator. So the other thing you can do here is you can, you know, of course, select things. So I'm only gonna worry about the eye view for now. So I'm just gonna click on these two arrows and click it. And basically it's gonna, it's gonna expand it because this is what I really wanna focus on for now to, to run the simulation. So, so that's all really you need to do. Now you gotta go into Unity and then basically play your game. Once you play your game, you're gonna see that what you're seeing on the scene view and on the game view are gonna show right on the virtual room. So you can see that, you know, I'm seeing the, I'm actually seeing the UI and I'm also seeing my, you know, the generator. And, and the cool thing about this is as I'm rotating, you can see that the camera in the game view is actually rotating as well. Even if you select, I believe if you actually click on the, on the main camera, and you can see that everything is updating in real time, which is actually really, really cool for testing. So I can rotate, I can get closer, and the position of the camera is rotating as well. And like I said, I this got tilted for some reason. I'm learning about it. So I'm gonna click on, let's see, let's just reset everything. I'm just gonna click here, reset the camera, hit play one more time. And there must be things that I'm not doing correctly to 
you know, to make sure that I'm that I'm looking that I'm using the controls correctly. But but this is great. I mean, I I know how to run the, you know, to run the virtual room. And and the other cool thing about this, if I hit, you know, if I regenerate the room, it's actually getting rege regenerated in here. So I'm just gonna click this one more time. Let's just rotate. And I'm not gonna zoom out this time. I'm just gonna focus on that. And let's go in and regenerate. I'm gonna regenerate the procedural building. And we can see it in there. The other cool thing that I found out today too is that you can actually change the light intensity of this room. So right now it's I think it's set to 0.3. Let me look at it really quickly. So you can go here and let me just click on that to go to the to the other mode. And I believe this is under if we click on virtual room. So this gives us a lot of different settings. Let me I'm gonna do I'm just gonna resize it so we can see everything that we have in here. So this is the one that I that I learned, I learned about today. So if you want to change what they call the room darkness darkness bias, right now it's set to a 0.3. So if I set it to 0.1, it's gonna be brighter. And and this is cool because if you're outside and you have a very you know the sun hitting your experience or or is very bright then you want to simulate how your game is going to look like with that much brightness and if i go to something like 0.7 you know that'll be a little dar a darker room if i do 0.8 that will be much darker which is gonna it's gonna make it look better so if i do that what if i do just one that's gonna be a completely black room so if you want to do maybe 0.95 be much darker so that will give you a better idea how it's gonna look in you know a darker a darker room the other thing that you can do too if you want to change the ambient color of the light so you know, maybe you have a you know a, a yellow lamp and that is reflecting yellow and you can see how that reflects to your you know your structure you can you can also do that as well so I'm gonna just set it back to black you you also have some other different settings that I, I really haven't played with but this one was really really cool because I was looking for that. I wanted to see how it was gonna look in a in a dark room. So let's do let's basically minimize that and focus on this now. So now if I go if I go to Unity and I regenerate my my building, which I'm doing by hitting the space key, you can see that that that's actually looking much better. So what if I wanted to go in? Let's say that. In real life, I am walking towards that structure and I wanted to see what's happening in the inside. I could actually go inside and see, okay, how does that look on the inside? And you can see that Unity is updating. This is updating. I know where the camera is. I know what I'm seeing in here. If I want to go back and see how it looks from far, I can also do that. You can kind of see when the, where the, you know, when you're starting to lose, fo lose basically the, the 3D stu structure. So I have to walk in to, you know, walk closer to to see the entire structure. So that's simulating what it'll do, you know, in real in real life. So that's really all I wanted to show you today. I think this is you know this is really helpful for for me because I learn a lot by by doing this. This is gonna be you know a key aspect of, of testing. So when I'm building my experience, I want to see how things look like. I want to see how you know different objects interact with with you know my structure in augmented reality. Because this game that I'm building, I'm gonna be dem basically it's a demolition game, and I'm gonna be destroying this structure. So I don't want to have to build to the to the device every time. I want to be able to to be as di dynamic as I can with the game engine. And when I'm happy with the results, then I'm gonna push that to the actual device. So that's all I wanted to show you today, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know through the comments. And again, don't forget to share this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.